Okay, so about nine months ago, I ended up buying a Mayflash Dolphin Bar, and this was to enable me to play light gun games on my Raspberry Pi. But as it turns out, it can do loads of other things as well. Uh, so I've got my Wiimote here, I've also got one in this gun adapter. So if I pick this up, it's already paired, uh, and if I move it around on the screen, you can see it moves the mouse pointer. Uh, and it's nice and responsive, and you actually have left button and also the bottom button here is the right button and you can configure it in various different ways but uh, I'm amazed at how well it works I initially couldn't get it to work properly but I've done a load of testing over the last week or so and uh, I've got some great games working with it so this is my Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig I've got my Xbox controller plugged in that's the adapter the, the wireless adapter for it and this is the May flash bar uh, I've got my mouse and keyboard still plugged in as well, and I'm running Twister OS from an SD card. So let's switch into screen capture. So the reason I'm using Twister OS is because I can run Windows applications and programs with Wine, uh, which is built into Twister OS. And uh, if you run it on other Linux configurations, it can be quite difficult to set up. This is always up to date and just runs really well within Twister. If I click on Wine Desktop, you can see it launches this interface which looks like an old version, something like Windows 95, which allows you to navigate through various different folders and to launch various different apps. But there's another way you can use it as well. If I close this down, you can see I've got a VirtuaCop 2 folder on my desktop. This is the PC version of VirtuaCop 2. So it's quite an old game, but as a light gun game, it works really, really well. So if I right click on this and open with Wine and wait a bit, Virtua Cop 2 loads up. So if I pick up my gun, uh, press the trigger and the lights come on, you can see there's two blue lights on the screen. Uh, so let's press the trigger and we can change between the two different modes that are on there, arcade game and proving ground. We can pick beginner, medium or expert. I'm gonna go for medium and I'll move back into screen capture but just to show you it working. And it's really hard to show the angles properly. Um, but uh, it actually is really accurate and uh, you need to move further away for it to be more accurate but you can see that it's working fine I'm managing all the shots pretty well and it is just really enjoyable to play and I'm just amazed that this works I really wasn't expecting this to work uh, as well as it works without any configuration without any messing about because it is really uh, a game that at the time would have been uh, designed to be played with a mouse and keyboard. But it just, it is just such an enjoyable game. And this was a 12 megabyte download. Really, really tiny. But I've got a lot more games to show and also on a lot more systems as well. So let me know in the comments if you can think of any other mouse gun games from this sort of era, around about not sort of 94, 95. Uh, because they're likely to be able to run on the Pi uh, with Wine. But uh, one of the things I struggled with was navigation because the mouse control gets captured by the game uh, and you can't navigate around the game. But you can see at the top here on the left hand side, we've got game device settings and help. If we press Alt and G, that gives us our game settings and that can exit out. But also if we go right, we've got device. Uh, Direct 3D does look better, but it messes up the graphics. Uh, settings, you can see I've got display settings, mode settings and so on. If I show you my display settings, this is what I was set on, arcade mode, 640x480. I did have a little trouble initially trying to get it full screen, but I got it running in the end. And we go back into uh, Alt S, so more settings, mode settings, device settings, skip frames. I didn't really change much on it apart from that. I did find maybe pressing Alt and Enter, uh, or was it, it might have been F10, was changing the screen mode, but now I've got it sorted, it, it launches full screen and works fine. Uh, obviously, albeit with a bit of a border, but it is showing it in a four by three mode, which is exactly how you want to play it, because that's how it was designed. So it is designed for the uh, Dolphin emulator, which is Wii and GameCube. Now I've got a separate video on Wii gun games, which I did ages ago, and uh, there's some really good Wii games in there. So I figured I'd try and get Wii running. And uh, the best version I had of Wii or GameCube running on the Raspberry Pi was uh, in Munkajaro 1.2. So let's load that up. Let's quit out of this and switch to a different SD card. Missed it. <laughs> Pop this one in and boot up. 
So here we are in Monkajaro 1.2. You can see I'm moving the mouse pointer around. I'm actually using the gun at the moment to navigate around uh, Manjaro. If I go down to the bottom here and click on it, it's not the best because uh, I've got a bit of shake there. So let's go up to Dolphin Emulator and let's click on that. And I'm going to switch over to mouse uh, because moving around these screens is a lot easier on a mouse. So controllers, uh, just to show you what I've set up. So emulated Wii Remote. And if I hit configure, you can see what controls I've got configured in here. So uh, Q and E, I found it was better to use them on the keyboard. Uh, sometimes you need the plus and minus buttons. I found that trying to map them to the controller didn't work that well for me. So I do use the keyboard if the minus or plus button is needed. Uh, so let's close that down and close that down. And let's launch Ghost Squad. Let's pick up the uh, light gun again. And if I press the trigger, that goes onto the next screen and press it again. You can see it's going in and la launching just like it would a normal Wii game. And I can move the pointer around on the screen, but that will turn into a cursor when it actually gets to the point of it. Now I need the plus button, uh, which is mapped as Q and E on the keyboard. So if I press E, you can see that selects the E uh, and then R code. There may be a way of doing this better, um, but I was just trying to get it working really. And actually, I won't end up playing it on this because uh, it doesn't work brilliantly. It's just a bit too slow on the Pi, which is such a shame. I was hoping some of the other sort of more easy to run light guns would have been fine. And I go back into screen capture. This is an amazing game. As you can hear, the uh, audio is a bit slow. So it, uh, it's still, weirdly, it's still enjoyable to play, um, but, uh, but you can see it's definitely running slower than it should. So let's switch over to my Mac because my Mac plays this really well. So let's grab my Mac uh, and this is the base model MacBook Air, the first one with an M1 chip. Uh, so it's completely silent, completely fanless. And uh, all this was connecting to my Xbox because I was using RetroArch on that. That's not gonna show in this video, um, but I may be able to get the Dolphin Bar running on my Xbox Series S, but I haven't, I kind of ran out of time on that. So the Dolphin Bar, I need to plug into my Mac now. So I've got a USB-C adapter. Let's just unplug it from here. Cause, and, it, and I can unplug it from the Pi when it's running because it doesn't matter, it's just, it's a mouse as far as the Pi is concerned. But what's impressive about this is, so you see the lights come back on here uh, and if I press this, uh, you can see it shows two lights to show that it's working. This doesn't need any setup. So the pairing Bluetooth between the Wiimote and the bar is just constant. So whatever pl you plug it into, if I plug it into any other device, I don't need to set these two up. Uh, and as I point it, well, this is a bit confusing because my bar's up here and my monitor's down here, but it doesn't matter. I can still play the game like it, but you can see the mouse pointer. Oh, and in fact, if I shake it around, yeah, it, uh, it shows up big, uh, which is a Mac feature. So let's launch Dolphin. And I use, oh, and there is a new version, so I probably ought to try the new version. For the purpose of the video, I know this works, so I'm not going to mess with it. I use this for the GameCube version of Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX2. With an Xbox controller, it works brilliantly, but I've shown that in a previous video, I'm sure. Uh, so let's launch that game. Let's go full screen. And I'm using the Wiimote to adjust everything. And I'm using QuickTime to record this uh, whilst it's running the emulator as well. So you see from this that it runs a lot faster. So I'll skip past all this. We're going in to save the president. Mission starts. You can see it's working perfectly. But let's get back to the pie. I'll just hit the chair, I like the chair spinning. <laughs> so let's switch back to the Pi, because uh, there's something else I want to show you on there. So if I unplug that one, plug it back into the Pi, I can close this down, pop my keyboard back, and let's just shut down Monkajaro. Uh, I could use this for a load of other things because it's got RetroPi built in, but I've done a standalone RetroPi, and I'll show you how I've set that up. So on this 64 gig Samsung bar, I've got Keo Deakin's Pistolero. Uh, so if I unplug this and pop that in, I'm not going to use this because it's not set up for this particular bar, although it can be adapted for it. Uh, but the great thing about this is it's got so many light gun games built in. It's available on Arcade Punks and loads of attention to detail has gone into this. Uh, so things like box art, 
uh, of various different systems, lots of videos you can watch. Um, but yeah, it's really nice that it's uh, a massive collection of light gun games. So what I'm going to do is shut this down and uh, I'm going to boot up in Ubuntu Mate, which is on this SD card. So I need to unplug Pistol Arrow, which is in a USB stick, switch off and switch on. I probably could have left that in because uh, it generally boots from the SD card as a priority. I can unplug the Dolphin Bar. Okay, now let's boot it up. Let's plug Pistol Arrow in. And uh, I've also got this build of RetroPie. This is the 64-bit version of RetroPie that uh, Monk has supplied me with. Uh, and I've done a separate video on it. But uh, it has Wii and Dolphin support. So that's why I started using that. So as you can see, it's opened up all the folders, all the partitions. So I can close down the boot partitions because I don't need those. So that's that one and that must be this one behind here. And then we've got to work out which one is which. Uh, so on the left hand side, uh, well if we go into Home, Pi and RetroPie. Uh, if I go into ROMs, I guess if I look at, um, yeah, say Atari. Pick 5200 and see if there's a ROM in there. So that's more than likely going to be my new RetroPie build. So if we do the same on this one, Home, Pi, RetroPie, ROMs, and what's that, Atari 5200, assuming there are, yeah. So the fact that that's got themed marquee in there, I know this must be Pistol Arrow. So if I wanted to copy a ROM across, uh, so say for instance, let's just pick a system that I haven't copied over. Let's try a Tommy's Wave. Because, what was that? There was a game that um, cropped up when I was editing the video that looked really impressive. I think it was this one, Ranger one. I might not show it in this video, but just to show uh, how I copy things over. So let's copy the game uh, and then go back on here to ROMs and... As you can see, I don't even have an Atomas Wave folder, so let's right click and create folder. And Atomas Wave. Got to make sure that you type in exactly as it is so it's all in lowercase. So let's open that up and let's just paste them in. And this is how you copy ROMs from a pre done build uh, onto a, a fresh copy of RetroPie. I'm going to have put some stuff in here. Uh, and the one that I really wanted to concentrate on uh, was Dreamcast, but I've also got the Wii ones on here. So if I click on that, you can see Ghost Squad, which I was playing just now, uh, but I was playing that in Munker's build. So that's copied over. Let's close all this down. And I'm going to boot up my, uh, it's a 16 gig SD card with a brand new copy of RetroPie with nothing else on it but the ROMs and also I copied over a BIOS folder um, so that more things would work. So let's shut this down. And you can see various different systems on here that I've copied some ROMs over uh, just to try out. So if we do the Wii one, uh, so we've got Ghost Squad on there, and it launches up. And it does work with the plus button, um, which I couldn't get configured before. So I think this probably set up itself. I can't remember if I configured this manually or not. Yeah, so a lot of slowdown at the start. Although this does, this definitely seems quicker than the other one. Uh, so in the Monkajaro build, it is slow, but I would say it's definitely more playable. Oh, that didn't go well. Yeah, I'd say this is definitely more playable. And the fact that I can skip on the remote, the fact that it's set up is decent. And very quickly show you, well, everybody shows arcade, but let's show a bit of arcade and uh, something a bit different. Operation Wolf is a bit different with its gameplay because it's a machine gun. So on this, you have to set um, the coin buttons. So select and start. For coin buttons but as you can see it works really well it's nice and accurate it's nice and fast the sound is decent it's a real attack of the senses this one oh shot is shot is knife oh grenade so let's quit out of that in fact before I quit out let's press tab this tab gives you all the, I'll oh, turn off the volume, uh, all the options. So you have to do input for this game and you have to set up a few different buttons. So coin one, you've got to set up. I did it on minus and uh, player one start, I did it on plus. I think that's the way around I did it. 
Um, there are some good videos on how to set this up, which I followed. Um, and uh, I think that was about all I had to do in this menu. So press tab and that takes you back to that menu. What happens if I press the home and why? Yeah, you get this menu. I can't remember if I had to change something in this. So it's set up as Retropad. Yeah, I did follow a different guide to set some of this up, but I can't remember how much of it was set up on its own. Anyway, let's quit out of that, because I think the one that was the most impressive probably was Dreamcast. This is now working incredibly well, and it's thanks to two guides. Uh, so one of them from Retropie.org, and also the other one is a YouTube video by Out of My Mind Arcade. I'll put links to both in the description. One of the key things, well let's just launch the game, when you're going into the RetroArch menus, and to do that you launch the game, and then press Home and Y, and that will get you to this menu. And one of the things that I did in the guide that was wrong was I tried to enable a crosshair and uh, a few different menus, but you need to close down RetroArch and start it up again, or relaunch the game for the new menu options to show up, so just a little tip. But that video and, uh, and that, those written instructions really helped me a lot. So let's show how well this runs, and it is brilliant. This is a great game, the music's great, uh, the graphics are great, the storyline's really good, it is just everything about it is really cool. And to reload you've got to go down to the bottom corner of the screen I think on this one. Now I managed to get PlayStation 1 working. Uh, everything I'd read said that I needed the Beetle emulator, um, but uh, when I went through and tried the Beetle emulator, I could get it to work. Uh, it would launch the game, but I couldn't get the light gun to work properly. Uh, so I've changed it to PCSX, and that seems to be working absolutely fine for me. So I've hit launch. The thing is, you I couldn't see a crosshair on this. There might be one. Uh, like on the Dreamcast, but I've kind of run out of time on this. Uh, I've spent ages doing this. And also, as soon as I launch this, my I need to press uh, Home and Y because the rumble works constantly. Uh, but if I go down to Controls and Port 1 Controls and change it to... Actually, I think Mouse was the one that worked. So let's go back in and pick up my gun. And you can see I've got two crosshairs on the screen. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why that is. I think I may have enabled uh, it in the settings, but it does work and the gameplay is absolutely fine. But uh, things like uh, Time Crisis doesn't have a crosshair. There may be a way of enabling it like there is on the Dreamcast. But uh, yeah, so, so PlayStation working as well. I did try it on my iPad, but it moves incredibly slow on the iPad, which is weird because my normal mouse works fine. Because I figured if I could find any mouse game, uh, you would be able to use it in the same sort of way. And this is a mouse controlled game uh, in the style of sort of Time Crisis. And it actually, it actually works really well. It's a shame that I couldn't get this to work. I could try it on my MacBook because that works differently. So you can see here, I've got mouse control. And you can, you can, Press this button to jump up and then you can squat down again and I figured there might be a way of getting that button to work without having to press the screen. But actually this with the light gun would have worked really nicely. But like I say, maybe I'll try it on my Mac. So I couldn't get it to work with my Samsung phone on DeX as well, Galaxy S8, but it is working with my Xbox. So this is duckhunt.org, which is just a website basically. Uh, so if I use my gun, I can click on that, and as you can see I can move the cursor around, the angle's a bit funny at the moment. And the cursor's a bit shaky, but it does definitely work. You have to go for the crosshairs, not the cursors. And I could probably change the sensitivity somehow. Anyway, I hope this helps. You'll find links to the Dolphin Bar in the description. Thanks very much for watching, please like and subscribe.